Hi everyone, it's Kilowatt here again to do another reading time with you. I'm so excited to share the two books I found this last time that I was at the Saskatoon Public Library. And yeah, isn't it great that we now have spring in the air and the clouds are out and the sun is out and all the leaves are appearing and it's a great time to explore a whole bunch of different sciencey things in the outdoors. So we're going to start with a lovely book called Ada Twist Scientist. Yeah, it's by Andrea Beatley and illustrated by David Roberts. Okay, look at that. They even have graph paper as part of the as part of the book. Isn't that so great? Yeah. <clears throat> so let's get started. Ada Marie, Ada Marie, said not a word till the day she turned three. She bounced in her crib and looked all around, observing the world, but not making a sound. Ooh. She learned how to climb and made her big break with a trail of chaos left in her wake. She ran through the day, chasing each sound and sight and didn't slow down till she conked out at night. <gasps> Look, she fell asleep on top of the dresser. Ooh, what's going to happen next? <gasps> There's her parents. Her parents were frazzled but tried not to freak as Ada grew bigger and still did not speak. Clearly young Ada with lots in her head would have something to say when it ought to be said. Yeah, not everyone speaks right away and that's okay. Some people never speak and that's okay too. Lots of ways to communicate. That's just what happened when Ada turned three. Oh, three, the magic number. She tore through the house on a fact-finding spree and climbed up the clock just as high as she could. Oh, her parents yelled, stop, uh, as all good parents would. Oh, she's climbing on top of things. Do you do that? You probably shouldn't if you don't have parental advice on that. It can be very dangerous. Ada's chin quivered, but she did not cry. She took a deep breath and she simply asked, why? That's a good question, asking why. Why does it tick and why does it talk? Why don't we all call it a granddaughter clock? Why are there pointy things stuck to a rose? Why are there hairs up inside of your nose? Ooh. Do you, I have hair nose too, do you? She started with why and then what, how and when. By bedtime, she came back to why once again. She drifted to sleep as her day's parents smiled at the curious thoughts of their curious child who wanted to know what the world was about they kissed her and whispered, you'll figure it out. So many cool things to ask those questions about. Her parents kept up with their high-flying kid, whose questions and chaos both grew as she did. Look at that. Lots of questions. Oh, look at the sun and all the planets. At that she set off the soda experiment that's so much fun even miss greer found her hands were quite full when young ada's chaos wreaked havoc at school but this as much was clear about miss ada twist she had all the traits of a great scientist yeah. always being curious and asking questions that's totally what scientists do it's what you can do too Ada was busy that first day of spring, testing the sounds that make mockingbirds sing, when a horrible stench whacked her right in the nose, a pungent aroma that curled up her toes. Zowie, said Ada, which got her to thinking, what is that source of that terrible stinking? How does a nose know there's something to smell? And does it still stink if there's no nose to tell? Ooh, good question. 
She rattled off questions and tapped on her chin. She started at the start where she ought to begin. A mystery, a riddle, a puzzle, a quest. This was the moment that Ada loved best. Look at all the different things. What could it be? Ada did research to learn all she could of smelling and smells both the stinky and good. One hypothesis Ada thought could be true. The terrible stink came from dad's cabbage stew. She tested and tested, but soon Ada knew it was time to come up with hypothesis too. Look at her being all creative. Then Zowie, the sink struck again, just like that. Hypothesis two, it's caused by the cat. <gasps> cat. The cat couldn't make such a stink on its own. It needed perfume and some fancy cologne. So young Ada tested, the test was a flop. Oh, tested it. Maybe don't do this. This is a book, so don't test on a cat if you have a cat. <laughs> she started again, but her parents yelled stop. Oh, good thing they did. Don't want to put the cat in the washer or dryer. Nope. Ada Marie, Ada Marie, to the thinking chair now. By the time we count three, enough said her mother. That's it, said her dad. Her parents were frustrated, frazzled, and mad. Why, Ada questioned. Her mother said no. What, Ada queried. Her father said go. You've ruined our supper. You've made the cat stink. Enough with your questions. Now it's sit there and think. She looked at her parents. Her heart turned to goo. Poor Ada twisted and no. What to do? Yeah. That's always hard. She sat all alone by herself in the hall, and Ada once more could say nothing at all. Just sitting there thinking. That's harsh. Oh, but where did her brain go with all the time to think? Let's find out. And so Ada sat, and she sat, and she sat, and she thought about science, and Stu, and the cat, and how her experiments made such a big mess. Does it have to be so? Is that part of success? Are messes a problem? And while she was thinking, what was the source of that terrible stinking? Ada Marie did what scientists do. She asked small questions, and then she asked two, and each of those led her to three more questions more, and some of those questions resulted in four. As Ada got thinking, she really dug in. She scribbled her questions and tapped on her chin. She started at why and then what, how and when. At the end of the hall, she reached why once again. at all the thoughts that she's had. Her parents calmed down and they came back to talk. They looked at the hallway and just had to gawk. No patch of bare paint could be seen on the wall. The thinking chair now was the great thinking hall. <laughs> they watched their young daughter and signed as they did. What would they do with this curious kid? who wanted to know what the world was about. They smiled and whispered, we'll figure it out. And that's what they did because that's what you do when your kid has a passion and a heart that is true. They remade their world, now they're all in the act of helping young Ada sort fiction from fact. She asked lots of questions, how could she resist? It's all about the heart of a young scientist. <gasps> Family doing science together. It's wonderful, isn't it? Everyone can learn together. Oh, what do you think is next? <gasps> and as for that smell, what can Ada Twist do? But learn all she can with her friends in grade two. 
Ooh. Will they discover the stink that curls toes? Well, that is the question. And someday, who knows? Look, they're still all testing different smells. And that's the end. Oh, that was so much fun to read and learn about scientists and way that you can think as a scientist. And now you can go do all the sciencey stuff too, as long as you make sure that you talk to a responsible adult about it before you do it. And you don't want to get hurt while doing science because we want to stay safe and have fun. Okay, everyone, let's take a reading break. And if you can, oh, hi, Sherlock. Are you taking a reading break with us too? Yes, great, okay, so, what we're going to do is we're going to stretch. Yeah, oh, did you see? Sherlock is ready for his stretches down here. Yeah, can you stretch? Awesome. Yeah, Let's get those wiggles out, okay? I'm sure you're just as excited as Sherlock. So, I thought today to get our wiggles out, we can pretend to be different types of insects. So, let's do the first one. If you're like a spider, what would you do? Act like a spider and crawl around. Around. Yeah. Oh. Uh. Nice. Oh. Oh, did you see? Oh, Sherlock. Oh, I think we better copy Sherlock. He's doing downward dog. Can we do that too? Go like this. Oh. Stretch. <gasps> yeah, good stretches, Sherlock. Good stretches. Yeah. Okay, next one. Let's do a turtle on its back that flips over, okay? Turtle, go with us. Oh. Oh, we're losing shoes, we're losing shoes. Okay, ready? Oh, are you pushing me over? Push, your luck. Push me over. Thanks. Oh, I'm up again. Yes. Good boy. Okay. Oh. What else should we do, Sherlock? Can we do a couple of jumping jacks? That would be like what? I would say like a squirrel jumping, right? So, a jump, a jump. Can we jump like a And jump, and jump. Yeah, good job. Okay, ready? And again, and jump. Good job, okay. And so now we're going on to our book two. So in our first book, with Ada Twist, one of her questions was about the solar system and solar planets and about some of those things. So the second book, we're going to explore a story with the planets called XOXO Planet, written by Deborah Underwood and illustrated by George Lassiera. And we're going to introduce the characters, the different plants. First, so there's the sun, there's Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, and dwarf planet Pluto. So there's actually four other dwarf planets besides Pluto, but this book is just including dwarf planet Pluto. Isn't that fun? And now we get to go. I love this book. It's so colorful. The colors are so pretty. Okay. The planets were swirling around the sun as usual when Neptune discovered something. <gasps> what do you think Neptune discovered? What do you see? Asked dwarf planet Pluto. I see a planet, but it's not circling our sun. It's circling another star far, far away. Oh. Isn't that cool? Where, where do you think that is? <gasps> Jupiter called a meeting. We will send a letter of greeting, he said. What should we say, asked Mercury, and what should we call the planet? This planet is outside our solar system. Exo means outside, so we will call it an exoplanet, said Venus. Ooh, that's cool, isn't it? Exo. Jupiter dictated, Dear Exoplanet, we are excited to have you in the galaxy. Exoplanets. 
Uh, does anyone know what XO means? Well, X usually stands for kisses and O stands for hugs. Isn't that a cool shorthand? So instead of saying kisses and hugs, you can say XO. Well, that was nice green they sent off. And they're sitting around the table now. Let's see what happens. It took a while for the planets to hear back. Fortunately, planets have a lot of time. Oh, they're playing some cards. Cards is a good way to pass time. Oh, look at that. They got a letter back. Dear planets, it is nice to hear from you. But what is an exoplanet? Does it mean excellent planet? Exo, exoplanet. Dear exoplanet, an exoplanet is a planet circling a star that is not the sun. Exoplanets, they wrote back. Oh, that's cool. Oh, they sent another one. Isn't it cool that they're using these like little rockets to send notes? Dear exoplanets, I'm afraid you are mistaken. I am circling the sun, my sun. You are the exoplanets. Exo, just plain planet. What? What does that mean? Dear exoplanet, we are looking around our sun. We don't see you. So you are the exoplanet. Exoplanets. Uh oh, I think everyone's getting a little confused and frustrated. Dear exoplanets, I'm looking around my sun. I don't see you. So you are the exoplanets. Period, period, period. No erases. Exoplanet. Uh oh. I think some people are getting, some of the planets are getting a little upset, hey? Let's see what else. Oh, there's a lot more notes going back and forth. Dear exoplanet, you are the exoplanet. Am not. Are too. Am not. Have you had an argument like that before with someone? I know I have. Me and my siblings used to do that all the time. Here is a map of the planet, of the real planets. Oh, look at. They have the sun and then they have all of the planets in our solar system. But are those really the only real planets? <clears throat> and look at what the exoplanet sent back. Here is a map of the real planets and crosses them all these ones up and mark and marks the exo X marks the exoplanets. Oh, see? So all the ones in our system are exoplanets. What does this mean? Why is there this confusion? Jupiter fumed to his dozens of moons. We are not exoplanets. The moons yell, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, we're not. We have been planets for billions of years. Yeah, 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 yeah. They all say all the screen, all the moons. No one is going to tell us we are exoplanets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So his moons support him. Do you think that's right? Knock it off. Oh, I think Jupiter's losing his temper. That's not good. One should not lose their temper at other people. Should take a break if that's the case. Mercury, write this, says Jupiter. Dear exoplanet, you are the exoplanet. You are out of our solar system, just like we are out of patience. Do not bother to write back. Exo. P L A N E T S. Planets. Ooh, that's not good. I think they're going to wreck their new relationship. The planets orbited the sun in silence, and space was a little bit more lonely. Oh, don't they all look sad? So quiet. They've lost a friend. Oh, who's this? After a while, a comet flew by, as she did from time to time. What's wrong, she asks. Hmm. Oh, they're all going off again. Let's see what they have to say. We found an exoplanet, and they say we're the exoplanets. Exoplanet, sh most planet, we're planets. I am far too important to be an exoplanet, said Jupiter. Ooh, that's some nasty attitude. All this fighting makes me blue, says Earth. It's scary when Jupiter gets mad. It's hard for us rings to be around Saturn when they're sulking. Oh, this is not good. What if we really are exoplanets? I miss the exoplanet. Me too. Hmm. Lots of varying emotions. 
all legit. But, but how we deal with them is important too. We should deal with them so that we don't cause harm to ourselves or others. Let's see what the comment says. Please, everyone, calm down. Mercury is Earth. Big. Oh, my tongue fumbled there. Let's start over. Everyone, please calm down. Mercury is Earth big or small? To Mercury, big. Earth is more than twice my size. Jupiter, is Earth big or small? Small, you could fit more than a thousand Earths inside me. Oh, what? How can Earth be big and small? It's about perspective. Uranus, is Mars hot or cold? Hot, look how close he is to the sun, right? Venus, is Mars hot or cold? <gasps> Downright chilly, look at his ice cap. Huh, once again, two different things for the same thing. What's going on? Comet asks, who's right? Do you know who's right? Are they all right? <gasps> Pluto says, they're all right. It all depends on how you look at things. <gasps> yes, and how we look at things is called perspective. I think we owe someone an apology, said Jupiter. Mercury, please write this. Dear planet, we are sorry. We understand now. To us, you are an exoplanet, but to you, we are the exoplanets. But no matter what anyone calls us, we are all round objects that travel around a star and we hope we can be friends. XO, 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 your exoplanets. Oh, look at that, the con message back. The exoplanet wrote back. Ooh, let's see what they wrote. Oh, it's a beautiful picture of them all together, hugging. Oh, let's see, that's the exoplanet to us. And it's all of our planets in our solar system. That's an exoplanet to them. But they can all be friends. And space was a little less lonely again. <gasps> Yay! Pen pals are awesome. Oh, what's this? There's a little note to us readers from the author. Let's see what they have to say. Dear reader, there really are exoplanets circling stars other than our sun. The first exoplanet orbiting a sun-like object star was discovered in 1995. Now we found thousands with more being discovered each year. Wow. Some exoplanets can be directly detected with powerful telescopes. Astronomers can also find exoplanets by observing stars. If a star's light gets dimmer, then bright again, it could be because an exoplanet passed in front of the star, blocking some of the star's light. And if a star wobbles a bit, it might be because an exoplanet is pulling on it as it circles the star. Isn't that cool? Is there life on exoplanets? We don't know yet. I'm writing this letter in 2020, and the closest exoplanet we know of right now is so far away that it would take light more than four years to reach it, and light travels at 186,000 miles per second. That's so fast. Astronomers are looking for ways to find life on these far off planets without traveling to them. So in the future, maybe someone will make the exciting first discovery of exoplanet life. Maybe that someone will be you. Yeah, because you could be a scientist and do that. Absolutely. XO, the author. P.S. When I was a kid, Pluto was a planet. Then the way scientists define planet changed as more information was found, and Pluto became a dwarf planet instead. There are at least five dwarf planets too, many to put in this book, but I included Pluto as a tribute to the nine planet solar system of my childhood. So isn't that interesting? The more we learn as scientists explore the way things can change and be reclassified and that's totally okay and important because we can only know what we know as we learn but we have to be willing to change what we know or think we know as more information becomes available well thanks for joining me for this awesome story time
it was so exciting reading to you all again and hopefully we'll see you another time soon. XO!